I have always had trouble with these uh, turnouts here. These old Atlas turnouts. The uh, points would never hold against the divergent rail here. Be fine for a couple of uh, laps. And then the vibration would cause the, the rail to move a little bit and have a gap and the trucks would go whichever way they decided to go resulting in a derailment this little plastic thing doesn't have enough throw and is not stiff enough to actually cause the points here to stay uh, adjacent to the rail this goes into a square hole right here and this square hole wears such that you get some slop in it too. You get some slop in all these stupid rivets. But all in all, the switch isn't very good. I don't have the funds to go crazy with switches, so I wanted to at least get this reliable so I could so I could do testing. There were switch machines made by a company called TrueScale. Mighty Might switch motors, simple to install, top mounting, and it had a relay in it to either run auxiliary lights or electrofrog or whatever you wanted to do with it. So that was an option to try and correct this problem with these stupid little uh, Atlas solenoids. And here's what you got for your three or four bucks or whatever it was back in the day. This is a little piece of steel wire. You got the switch machine and you got the instructions. What more could you want? Here's the switch machine without its cover on. Fairly obvious what the components are. You have the solenoid part here and you have a bell crank that's pushed back and forth by the solenoid the relay that controls other things like lights and electrofrogs and more on on this later <laughs> um, and a base which is nice because it just doesn't have a bunch of round holes but it's got a round hole here it's got a oblong hole here you can't see from this angle and this this oblong hole which means that you don't have to be super precise when you when you place the switch machine there's always room for a little bit of adjustment and this uh, steel linkage part or what will be a linkage when you bend it is uh, forgiving enough that you can make changes to it that are larger than what you would would get from this uh, this amount of um, adjustment so basically a kind of nice package with a couple caveats but <clears throat> this one uh, this one has corrosion on it so I didn't clean it off but anyway it works but they have a couple of downsides too one is that the wiring is uh, via this magnet wire and it's really hard to get the enamel insulation off it took me a long time to do that and when I tested it sometimes sometimes the switch machine would work sometimes it wouldn't sometimes the divergent selection would work sometimes the main route would work it was driving me crazy. I mean, something was wrong. I tested it with with the old machine. It was getting electricity. It was doing its thing. So I didn't know what to make of it. Anyway, what I decided to do was to scrape off all the enamel insulation that I could from the ends of these these little wires, and then solder them to the feeder wires, which are here and uh, hope for the best so I did that and lo and behold it worked they're reliable work all the time 
with an exception, which I'll get to later. All right, big downside to this switch machine is solenoid. Well, one is they're not made anymore, uh, but the operational one is this, there's a spring here that activates the relay, and it's held on by a couple of little nibs on either side. Now, those nibs aren't long enough. So when you switch it back and forth, the spring is almost guaranteed to fly out. In fact, this machine that I installed had a spring. I managed not to lose any of the spring so far. Until I was installing this, was testing it, all of a sudden the spring went boing, flew off somewhere, can't find it anywhere. It's not small, so it should be easy to find, but damn if I know where it went from place. I mean, I know my workbench here, my test setup is a mess, but it's not so messy that I couldn't find a giant, by HO standard, spring like this. Anyway, uh, what I tried to do was to drill a hole here and make the installation neat. Didn't quite work out the way I wanted to, so I ended up, uh, th this red thing was supposed to go all the way over Oh, the shrink tubing all the way over till it got to the spaghetti coming out of the switch but uh, it was too small so I had to cut it off and make do with with just these uh, shrink tubing between the the magnet wire and the feeder and uh, so the thing was up in the air about yay far so I just glued it down to the table here so keep it out of the way. It's not anything special, but it works. In fact, there it goes. It works just fine. Other Atlas stuff I have left over is this uh, little controller here. Just momentary switches. And I've got that connected to the the two uh, turnouts I've got on the test track. Works just fine after I took it apart and cleaned it. I had to fabricate a little piece out of the wire that was supplied in the box here um, to, to run the switch. The story behind this uh, hole where the uh, linkage goes is that I tried to make an over center spring so that I could still use these uh, uh, switch machines of which I have, I don't know, five or six of them, six of them, seven, I don't know. I've got a bunch of them. Uh, I got some track and that had a, a lot of these in it. The four that I initially had back in the 60s are all rusty, they don't work anymore. So I was replacing them with this. Now the 60s one had a piece of wire coming out here, which was nice because you could you could bend it and it was stiffer when it was going into the the main route on this installation when I went to switch it back it wouldn't move it, the solenoid wouldn't actuate looking at it closely I discovered that there's a, a fiber insulator or something or other here that the end of this uh, bell crank hits upon to prevent it from going too far in this in that direction. So when this when the switch activated and it didn't go into that slot that's been worn in there, uh, the switch worked fine. When it stopped where it was supposed to, there was no problem, of course. But when it did go through, it was stuck forever. It wouldn't move unless you. Uh, got it unstuck by hand. So I took a little bit of JB Quick and I dabbed some on here away from the plunger so it wouldn't weld the plunger fast. Put some on here on this plate such that it would act as a stop for the bell crank. And that worked, uh, that worked really well. So far anyway, it hasn't stuck. This is uh, 
this is spring I mentioned I don't know if I pointed to it before but there it is somewhere lost in space in order to get the uh, actuating rod to move freely I had to put spacers under the switch to raise it up to give it clearance I thought that might be a problem with the cars having to climb this little grade and then go back down and possibly uncoupling or derailing but so far it's been fine Alright, so I hope you uh, enjoy this video. I enjoyed putting it together, but mostly I enjoy having a switch that's reliable now. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.